From timeless tales in classic literature to some of Hollywood's most well-loved blockbusters, our fascination with ancient Egypt runs deep. But hold on to your chariots. Recent groundbreaking discoveries have begun to reshape so much of what we thought we knew about this fascinating civilization. Fresh archaeological approaches and new technology have totally revolutionized the field of Egyptology. And that means we're beginning to unearth unexpected truths and rewriting history as we previously knew it. Let's take a look at some of the most consequential finds of recent times. Recent discoveries are casting ancient Egypt in a new light. 1. Lion cub, crocodile, and cat mummies, towards the end of 2019, Egypt's Ministry of Tourism and Antiquities revealed the most remarkable collection of items to the public for the first time. Inside the Saqqara necropolis, which is located fairly close to the Giza pyramids, archaeologists had discovered a hall of mummies. But these were no ordinary human bodies. They were animals. Mummified cats, crocodiles, lion cubs they were all on show for the first time. It was an incredible collection, one that antiquities minister Colette Al-Anani called a whole museum by itself, and you can see why. The lion cub mummies were especially notable. Such discoveries are exceedingly rare. The mummified remains of domestic cats are a relatively common thing to find in Egypt, but lions are a different story altogether. They were definitely the standout artifacts of the collection. If nothing else, so many of these items illustrate just how obsessed ancient Egyptians were with cats of all types. Elsewhere in the collection were some statues of Sekhmet, a female deity associated with war who was depicted with a human's body and the head of a lioness. The Cemetery of the Pyramid Builders, in 2019 the discovery of an old Kingdom-era cemetery complex in Giza, was announced by Egyptian officials. Often when ancient tombs and remains make the news, it's because they belong to the kings and queens of ancient Egyptian society. But that's not quite the case here. The people who were laid to rest down here were those responsible for constructing the pyramids. There were normal workers buried on this site, plus two high-ranking people named Benui Ka and Y. Dr. Zahi Hawis, who also served two stints as Egypt's antiquities minister, delivered a statement in the wake of the discovery's announcement. Commenting on the significance of the find, he said, the discovery of the Pyramid Builders Cemetery reveals to the whole world that the pyramids were not built by slaves, but its builders had built their tombs beside their kings. The belief that the pyramids were constructed by slaves is a long-held one, but the archaeological evidence is increasingly revealing that presumption to be false. The discovery of a dedicated cemetery for these builders provides further evidence to the contrary. The big void inside the Great Pyramid, working under the banner of Scan Pyramids a team of experts, shook the world of Egyptology in 2017, when their high-tech investigative methods came up with an amazing discovery. Using sophisticated scanning technology that involved cosmic rays it's too complicated to get into they managed to see deep into the Great Pyramid of Giza as never before. By scanning the pyramid, the team could see what was at its heart without having to damage the structure by physically boring into it. But what was at the heart of it? Well, it's what they called the big void. Experts can't say with any certainty precisely why this feature was included in the structure, but there are theories. One is that the space was useful during construction. A ramp within the monument could have been positioned in there to help move blocks into place. Beyond that, there's a line of thinking that says the void is a secret tomb of the pharaoh Khufu. The truth, of course, is still unknown. Speaking in 2023 to The National, Egyptologist Dr. Salima Ikram admitted, we still have so much to learn from this amazing monument, despite the fact that it has been an object of interest for thousands of years. The colossal statue of the little-known pharaoh Samtuk I, when in 2017, a portion of a colossal statue was found in northeastern Cairo, the initial conclusion was that it depicted the pharaoh Ramesses II. But after the hieroglyphics it bore were studied more carefully, experts changed their minds. This, they now believed, was a statue of Samtuk I, a pharaoh about whom not much is yet known. Piece by piece, experts have been discovering fragments of this colossus. So far, about 4,500 segments have been found. With each new piece, researchers were able to paint a clearer picture of who Samtuk I was. 
He'd previously been considered a relatively unimportant leader in ancient Egyptian history, but this statue was beginning to suggest otherwise. In a statement to Aram Online, the head of the Ministry of Antiquities Ancient Egyptian Sector, Ayman Ashmoy, shed a little light on the state of the statue. The new fragments confirm that the Colossus once depicted King Samtuk I standing he said, but it also reveals that his left arm was held in front of the body, an unusual feature. A very carefully carved scene on the back pillar shows the kneeling King Samtek I in front of the creator god Atum of Heliopolis. Using all the fragments, experts have since managed to draw up a digital projection of how the Colossus might have originally looked. The rendering is just another step towards understanding a little more about Samtek I and the people over whom he ruled. The Lost Golden City, for thousands of years, the Lost Golden City of Aten, lay beneath the sands of Egypt. But in 2021 word came from Egyptologist Drive. How is that it had, at last, been found? That remarkable news led some experts to dub it one of the most vital discoveries since the tomb of Tutankhamun. The archaeological team who discovered a 10 delivered a statement in the wake of their triumph. The Egyptian mission under Dr. Zahi Hawis found the city that was lost under the sands they said. The city is 3,000 years old, dates to the reign of Amenhotep III, and continued to be used by Tutankhamun and A. Excavations began on the site during fall 2020, and pretty soon clear progress was being made. Within weeks, to the team's great surprise, formations of mud bricks began to appear in all directions the archaeologists revealed. What they unearthed was the site of a large city in a good condition of preservation, with almost complete walls and with rooms filled with tools of daily life. Over the following months, entire neighborhoods and incredible artifacts were excavated. It was like getting a snapshot of how life had once been here. The mummification workshop at Deir el Bersha, the term mummification workshop is quite an unsettling one, but that's exactly what a team of Egyptian and German archaeologists ended up discovering back in 2018. The site, not far from the Saqqara necropolis, was an important discovery. The team found oils that would have been used during the embalming process. The specific oils that were used has long been a source of fascination, so this was a great find for the experts. As the archaeologist Ramadan Hussein put it in a statement published by German broadcaster Deutschwell, we are in front of a gold mine of information about the chemical composition of these oils. In addition to the ungents that were discovered, a number of jars and vessels that would have been used during mummification were also brought to light. There were also stone statues, plus a remarkable silver mask. That gilded mask was a particularly interesting find. Only one item that's in any way comparable has ever previously been excavated. As Antiquities Minister Al Anani put it after the discovery, it's only the beginning. The wooden coffins of Al Asasif, in 2019 Secretary General of Egypt's Supreme Council of Antiquities Mustafa Waziri, announced that a trio of wooden coffins, each covered with colorful scenes and hieroglyphics, had been excavated. He explained that they were from the 18th dynasty, which spanned 1550 to 1295 BC, it was actually a group of French archaeologists who had been responsible for the find, which happened during their works at the necropolis of Al Asasif. Only months before these three wooden coffins were found, the discovery of about 30 others, all some 500 years less ancient, had been publicized. Two of the three newly found coffins were identified as belonging to women. The experts had even been able to discern their identities. One was named Tiebo, and the other was called Rao. The third coffin was a bit of a mystery. We don't have any idea of the name of the person who was laid to rest within it, as there are no inscriptions to be found on its exterior. In fact, even the gender of the mummified corpse was impossible to ascertain on initial inspection. The underground tunnel at Tapasaras Magna, for roughly two decades, University of Santo Domingo archaeologist Kathleen Martinez dedicated herself to tracking down the resting place of the legendary Egyptian Queen Cleopatra. That, quite clearly, is far from a simple thing to achieve. But in 2022 Dr. Martinez and her team found something that might be the real deal at the ruins of Tapasaras Magna, an ancient city in northern Egypt. Speaking to CNN about all the findings, Dr. Martinez said, the excavation revealed a huge religious center with three sanctuaries, a sacred lake, more than 1,500 objects, 
busts, statues, golden pieces, a huge collection of coins portraying Alexander the Great, Queen Cleopatra, and the Ptolemies, the most interesting discovery is the complex of tunnels leading to the Mediterranean Sea and sunken structures. These tunnels, potentially, could lead to Cleopatra. It said Cleopatra purposely allowed a poisonous snake to bite and kill her, such was her grief for her late husband Mark Antony. Where they had been buried has long been a mystery, but Dr. Martinez thinks they might be in the Temple of Osiris at Taposaurus Magna. Why? Well, for one thing, Mark Antony was revered as the god Osiris in human form. It stands to reason that he would be laid to rest in a temple dedicated to that god. In any case, Dr. Martinez feels her work is on the right track. She and her team will explore the tunnels, and while she can't say for sure they'll lead to Cleopatra, it's not out of the question. And if she is found, it would be, in the archaeologist's own words, the most important discovery of the century. The royal necropolis at Meccan, long before the pyramids were raised, the ancient city of Meccan was an important part of the early Egyptian civilization. The site which is also called Hierakonpolis in Greek, meaning City of the Hawk, is an important one for Egyptologists, as it offers insight into what life was like before the dynastic period of Egyptian history kicked off. That's vitally important in its own terms, but also because it helps to paint a picture of the transition from that period into the dynastic one. The Hierakonpolis expedition website elaborated on the city's one-time significance. It reads, at its peak, at about 3600 to 3500 BC, Hierakonpolis must have been one of, if not, the largest urban units along the Nile, a regional center of power, and a capital of an early kingdom. It later became the center of worship of Horus, the falcon god. Meccan has been at the center of archaeological works for a century or so, but potentially it still has much to offer us. Already it's told us a lot about religious practices and how pre-dynastic Egyptians treated their dead. Works have also revealed the site of what seems to have been a zoo, with evidence of crocodiles, hippos, baboons, and leopards being kept there. Remarkable in itself, the discovery suggests an interest in animals that we may previously not have associated with the ancient Egyptians of that period. The cult statue of Amun, inside a temple built to celebrate the deity Amun, archaeologists in 2018, found a statue of Aspelta. He was a king who ruled from 593 to 568 BC. But it wasn't Egypt he ruled. No, he was the king of Kush, a Nubian civilization. Some of Aspelta's ancestors were rulers of Egypt, but personally he never enjoyed that honor. So, why are we talking about a statue depicting him in an article about ancient Egypt? Well, the histories of ancient Egypt and Nubia are so closely interlinked that anything we can learn about one will tell us something about the other. Both Nubia and Egypt relied on the River Nile's floodwaters to make their respective civilizations viable. They even worshipped the same deity in the form of Amun, a figure closely associated with notions of kingship. Both the differences and the similarities between Nubia and Egypt are absolutely fascinating, and any discoveries that can help us to understand them both are today regarded as profoundly important, which is why finding this Aspelta statue was seen as so exciting. The sunken city of Heraklion, there's something so gripping about the idea of an ancient city that's been lost beneath the ocean's waves. Just think about the myth of Atlantis and its popular appeal. The thing is, though, such lost cities aren't just myths. Great, submerged cities now lost to the seas really do exist. Heraklion, which now sits off Egypt's coast in the Mediterranean, is a remarkable example. It was long presumed to be little more than a legend, but in 2000 archaeologists actually managed to find it. The lost city of Heraklion had been rediscovered, the insights that Heraklion can offer us into ancient life in this region cannot be overstated. By 2015 only 2% of the site had been explored, so there's so much more to learn about the place. But even by that point, some of the finds were incredible. The city, despite being underwater for so long, is actually in an astonishingly good state of preservation. There are submerged temples, statues of pharaohs and deities, shipwrecks from ancient times, blocks with both Egyptian and Greek text on them, sarcophagi, coins, and so much more. No wonder, then, that experts are excited by this place, and how much more it has to offer those with an interest in the region's ancient history.
The Tomb of Maya, in 1996 a tomb was discovered in Saqqara that really captured Egyptologists' attention. It was built as the resting place of Maya, who, it's believed, was the wet nurse of the famous King Tutankhamun. There's even an etching of the young Tut resting upon Maya's lap. Among other scenes depicted throughout the tomb we see Maya shown as a mummy, with the god of the underworld, Osiris, in front of her. We've known about Maya's tomb for a while now, but in 2015 it was announced that the public would be allowed to enter it for the first time. And with that announcement came another fascinating tidbit of information. Maya, it turns out, may have been more than Tutankhamun's wet nurse. It's possible she was his older sibling. The man who discovered the tomb, Elaine Zivi, spoke to AFP in 2015 about the idea that Maya and Tutankhamun were siblings. The extraordinary thing is that they are very similar he said. They have the same chin, the eyes, the family traits. 13. The gold-covered mummy, early 2023, brought word of some pretty great discoveries from the tombs of Saqqara at Memphis, the one-time capital of ancient Egypt. The highlight, though, was surely a mummy dating back some 4,300 years, which had been adorned in gold. The deceased man was called Hekshops, and he'd been laid to rest down a shaft some 33 feet deep. Former Egyptian Antiquities Minister Dr. Hawes spoke to Associated Press about seeing the mummy for the first time. He said, I put my head inside to see what was inside the sarcophagus. A beautiful mummy of a man completely covered in layers of gold. Mummies totally adorned in gold have been found before, but none as old as this one. The decoration is telling about the sort of person this man must have been, but the additional details that he had been found with a band wrapped around his head and a bracelet around his chest make it even clearer. This guy must have been wealthy. He was also dressed in a tunic and belt, which experts have pondered quite a bit. Some think this attire represents an attempt to make the deceased resemble the living, which would be an interesting detail. It implies a religious practice we don't know much about that may eventually come to be comprehended. Tell El Amarna Jewelry, in 2022 a team of English and Egyptian archaeologists found a hall of beautiful golden jewelry as they worked at the Tell El Amarna necropolis. This was an ancient cemetery for the people of Amarna, a 3,000-plus-year-old city built to serve as the pharaoh Akhenaten's capital. Akhenaten who was also known as Amenhotep IV, was an extremely significant figure. He reformed the religious practices of his civilization. Before Akhenaten Egyptians venerated several gods, but under this pharaoh the focus of worship came to be dominated by one deity in particular. Aten. Under Akhenaten, Atenism became the religion of the state, but following his death the civilization reverted back to polytheism. Akhenaten was then dismissed as a heretic. That episode in ancient Egyptian history is regarded as particularly fascinating by modern historians, which is why the discovery of this jewelry was deemed so exciting. The hall was found buried with a woman of quite a young age, who was also wrapped up in textile and plant fiber. Her jewels consisted of a necklace and rings on her fingers. One of her rings depicted Baz, a deity associated with protecting people's homes, mothers, kids, and childbirth. In later times Baz and Bess, the male form of the deity, came to represent a defense against all things bad and a positive force for all things good. These sorts of discoveries really help us to understand what ordinary people of the time most valued. Falcon Shrine of the Blemis Berenik was a port which stood at the edge of Egypt's eastern desert region. It was established by the pharaoh Ptolemy II Philadelphus, who decided to name his port in dedication to his mom. Berenice I of Egypt. Berenice was a really important center of trade, linking Egypt with India, Arabia, and Africa's east coast. In 2022 experts who work at Berenice as part of the Sikhet project announced the fascinating discoveries of their recent study. Basically, as they'd explored a religious complex in the area, they'd found a fair bit of evidence pointing towards the presence of the Blemis, a nomadic people of the desert. The religious complex in question is known as the Falcon Shrine, and it seems to date to circa 300 to 500 AD. The Romans would have been in control of the area at that time, yet there are many signs that the Blemies were occupying at least certain parts of the city. This place, then, was something of a melting pot. Much evidence has been discovered in Berenic that seems to suggest a sort of mishmashing of cultures. 
Egyptian traditions are identifiable, but so too are those performed by the Blemies. Slowly but surely, discoveries like this are helping us to appreciate just how complicated and fascinating the region's past truly is. The sunken city of Pigudi, just a couple of miles away from the sunken city of Heraklion, lies another ancient center lost to the waves. Pigudi, its Egyptian name or Canopus, as the Greeks knew it was the site of a temple dedicated to Serapis, a sort of hybrid deity combining Egyptian and Greek beliefs. Serapis emerged during what is referred to as the Ptolemaic period. During this time, Pigudi became one of the most important centers around. Pilgrims from all over the place would descend upon the place to offer their respects to Serapis at his temple. In doing so, they hoped to be healed by miraculous means. The history of these pilgrimages to Serapis's temple halted in 391 AD, when a Christian emperor named Theodosius I banned what he viewed as pagan cults. Christian forces desecrated the temple, destroying statues and shrines along the way. They even tore down the temple building itself. It took a couple of thousand years before modern archaeologists rediscovered the foundations of the temples again. Yet by that point, of course, the sea had laid claim to the once great city, now submerged beneath the waters of the Mediterranean Sea. The Jehudi Funerary Garden, in 2017 researchers from the Jehudi Project, made an unprecedented discovery in Luxor. A funerary garden said to be 4,000 years old. It was an amazing find, shedding new light on what was then the country's capital, Thebes. Dr. Ose Galen, who led the research, spoke about it in a statement, saying, we knew of the possible existence of these gardens, since they appear in illustrations both at the entrances to tombs, as well as on tomb walls, where Egyptians would depict how they wanted their funerals to be. He went on, this is the first time that a physical garden has ever been found, and it is therefore the first time that archaeology can confirm what had been deduced from iconography. The discovery and thorough analysis of the garden will provide valuable information about both the botany and the environmental conditions of ancient Thebes of Luxor 4,000 years ago. Dr. Galen elaborated on the significance of the discoveries his team had made. He said, the plants grown there would have had a symbolic meaning and may have played a role in funerary rituals. Therefore, the garden will also provide information about religious beliefs and practices, as well as the culture and society at the time of the 12th dynasty, when Thebes became the capital of the unified kingdom of Upper and Lower Egypt for the first time. We know that palm, sycamore, and persia trees were associated with the deceased's power of resurrection. Similarly, plants such as the lettuce had connotations with fertility and therefore a return to life. Now we must wait to see what plants we can identify by analyzing the seeds we have collected. It is a spectacular and quite unique find which opens up multiple avenues of research. The Amarna letters, the Amarna letters are, in a word, fascinating. They were discovered in the ruins of Tel El Amarna, which as previously noted was once the ancient Egyptian capital when Amenhotep IV, or Akhenaten, was in power. The Amarna letter are basically tablets with cuneiform etched into them. The text doesn't originate in Egypt, but rather Mesopotamia, which goes to show how far it had spread throughout the wider region. Most of the tablets basically serve as letters from various rulers, some from areas north of Egypt itself. A number are from the Egyptian monarch, too. The contents of the letters vary. Some describe myths, while others consist of poetry. Scholars are still learning from these remarkable artifacts today. According to New York City's Metropolitan Museum of Art, there are two distinct types of letters in the Amarna collection. On the one hand, there are those written on behalf of leaders from the Levant, which would have consisted of small kingdoms and cities ultimately controlled by Egypt. In those, there's a bit of groveling going on. These leaders, knowing their own power relied on the goodwill of the Egyptian leadership, offer tribute and reverence. The second category of letter is far less reverent. These were written by more powerful leaders who weren't reliant on Egypt for their legitimacy. They addressed the Egyptian leadership as equals, rather than sucking up to them. Both categories provide a snapshot of contemporary relations between kingdoms and empires. The Fayum mummy portraits, the amazing Fayum mummy portraits were discovered inside a cemetery in Philadelphia. No, not that one, the ancient city of Philadelphia in Egypt. Anyway, 
Inside this cemetery archaeologists found a couple of strikingly lifelike mummy portraits. This was by no means typical. It's actually really rare to find mummy portraits. Across the ages, grave robbers have often made off with these funerary artworks, so the Philadelphia finds were seen as particularly exciting by archaeologists. Mummy portraits can tell us a lot about the people who have been laid to rest. Aside from giving us a really accurate idea of what they looked like, it also tells us something about the stature within the society from which they came. After all, it tended to be the rich and well-to-do who could afford to be painted and buried with their portraits. Basim Jahid, the director of the ancient Philadelphia Necropolis excavation, elaborated in correspondence with Live Science, the people who were buried in such a context in Philadelphia are for sure upper middle class or elite, so that they could offer to their relatives such expensive portraits that are identical to the person. The rock tombs of the Al Hamadiyya necropolis, in 2021 Egyptian history enthusiasts, were treated to the news that a set of tombs cut directly into a mountain had been found in the country's southern region. Numbering more than 300, they are presumed to have been created as the resting places of senior administrative officials of Akmam. This city was among the more important places of ancient Egypt, from a governance sense at least. The tombs aren't by any means uniform, with a variety of styles being discernible. In fact, they trace back to different time periods. Some go as far back as the Old Kingdom, beginning in 2575 BC, while others are from the far more recent Ptolemaic period, which concluded in 30 BC. It's thought that there are far more tombs still to discover in this area. And the insights these places can potentially offer us are tantalizing. Powerful figures from one of the civilization's most important places were laid to rest here. It's incredible how literally hundreds of tombs carved into a mountain could go unnoticed for so long. But it also goes to show just how much more there is to learn and discover about ancient Egypt. Discovery by discovery, we get a clearer understanding of how this amazing place once functioned. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe.